Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Daniel here. Okay, we are returning to our Let's Play slash review of Wander the Cult of Barnacle Bay, and this is part three. Um, one of the main things I did wrong on the last, on episode two, was when I had Ross fall back, when I had him manipulate the initiative track, it should have taken his entire action, or his entire turn, not just one action. So that's another thing about kind of like moving in and out of water. There are certain things in this game that I think are more designed to slow the heroes down and kind of, in my opinion, get in the way of the fun a little bit. So that that is a kind of maybe a little other negative critique I have. I don't think that power that that action is so powerful that it should take an entire turn, but that is how it is written, and that is how we will play going forward. All right, so if you remember, we have cleared out this main tile here, okay? Both of our heroes are at three XP, meaning that the next one to gain an experience point will actually move into tier two, which will trigger a new spawn card here. And it'll also mean that we will be um, elevated in the, um, in the, in the, the, the spawning. So we will now spawn uh, level, uh, at tier two instead of tier one. The level of the enemies doesn't go up, just the, uh, the spawn tier. The first time I played the game, I made the mistake of when you move into the next tier, I thought the enemies leveled up with you and I found that um, it was super unfun. I was like, what the heck is going on with this game? Every time I level up, the enemies just get like exponentially stronger because my gear doesn't level up as fast as the enemies were leveling up. But so if you're playing the game, watch out. I don't know if that's a mistake that other people make, probably just me, uh, <laughs> but uh, anyway, so we are kind of in a lull here because we've cleared out these tiles, except for this little group of minions here who are behind a wall and also behind one of these uh, darkness spaces. And these darkness spaces, they kind of represent this like corrupted malaise that, uh, or miasma, I should say, that Elderbane is infecting the world with. And so the heroes have to kind of penetrate the darkness and delve into it to dissipate it and then to also discover what lies within the darkness. So we are back at Ross's turn here. We've got this marker here. So we're going to have him go and a couple things to think about. So up here we have a darkness token and a treasure token, which we can grab. And then here, this darkness card here, whoever moves into this spot, is going to automatically uh, trigger the this group of enemies to become engaged. So I think we want to probably send Tank over here. So since he's um, in the initiative track one, he's got some good bonuses to defense as well as his innate abilities. And so we'll send Ross up here to um, take care of these items here. So remember uh, his first point of action, he is going to move out of the water, which ends his movement. And then his second point of action, he will go ahead and move onto the darkness tile. And what you do is you just flip these over and then they become a regular tile once they're flipped over, which leads to some interesting things I think we'll see on the next map of how, um, how you can manipulate some of the red um, spaces on the map by using those. You can kind of change up the way the map works. But anyway, so for a second turn, he has moved here and that is an event space. And so we're gonna have our first random event. And again, like I said before, this simple system of, explore, of exploring certain uh, tiles and triggering random events, that coupled with the branching scenarios in the campaign, I really think that those two elements, and they're so simple, they're, they're not like complex, we're not talking about like uh, the uh, Dungeon Degenerates Hand of Doom level of complexity in the branching narratives, but 
just a very simple way of adding an element of surprise, of choice, of exploration to the maps and to the overall campaign. It just goes a long way in separating, I believe, this game from other games that people associate with this genre, such as like the zombie side games, or even, you know, Massive Darkness, or the just absolutely dreadful uh, Dark Souls game, which has no element. I mean, they took a video game all about exploration, mystery, and discovery, and stripped every ounce of mystery, exploration, and discovery out of the game. So something like this, designers out there it's such a simple thing to incorporate into your game that can go a long way into making it feel like it has something else going on besides simple tactical combat anyways so now we have our first event card so let's see what ross has discovered in the darkness well that's opp well that's opp huh you stare down a what as you stare down you stare down a well only to find a giant eye stares back. Check your knowledge. Okay, so knowledge here. Knowledge, dropping knowledge. Um, his knowledge is a three, and he doesn't have any abilities or anything else to um, to help with that role. And I just realized that my dice box is in the other room. So I will not have, uh, I was I have uh, Dark Light Memento Mori set up. And so we are, I'm learning that because I'm gonna be running that at a convention uh, soon. I'm not learning, I'm, I'm relearning it and trying to come to grips with a lot of the, uh, you know, house rules and, and, and additional rules that the designers have been making. But anyway, so we have to do a knowledge check. So we're gonna roll three dice and we're looking for crits or any X symbols. So anything except for range symbols. And, oh my God, <laughs> two range symbols. You hardly ever roll range symbols and one X. So I only have got, I only have one, um, Knowledge, so zero to one, you poke the eye and get slapped by a tentacle. Take one wound. All right, well, poor Ross lost a wound there, poking his nose into a well. So as you can see, if we uh, the best we could have done was a three or more. You offered a fish, it gives you a gift, draw a treasure card. So a simple little non-combat encounter adds some personality to the game. We know that there's like these weird creatures living in wells that, uh, are somewhat sentient perhaps so yeah that's cool okay so that was uh, Ross's turn so now we are back up to uh, tank at the top of the initiative track here so uh, let's see here um, tank for his first point of for his first action is going to move out of the water and then for a second he will do another movement action and he will move on to this spot here which is now going to be a standard spot, and that is going to be a treasure. So we're gonna move one, two. I don't believe that we remove this card. I believe that the darkness cards stay on the map and become standard spots, but let's take a look at that real quick. So here we have, um, when a darkness tile reveals an event symbol, let's see, when a darkness tile reveals a treasure chest, the hero immediately draws one treasure from the corresponding level treasure deck and places it in an item slot on their hero dashboard. If a hero receives a new item, they may freely arrange it. All right. Uh, throughout the campaign in Barnacle Bay, heroes will have to investigate darkness tiles to uncover special events. When a hero enters a darkness tile, you need to flip over the tile and place it face up on the same space. Then place the hero on top. Um, if, a darkner, if a darkness tile covers up a space with a red or blue dash line, it negates those lines, and the space is treated as an open, normal space. All right. Hey, I got, I got the rule right. <laughs> um, that's a rare, rare occurrence, right? All right. Anyway, so Ross has moved into the darkness, and he has been lucky enough to find a treasure. And we are at level one right now because of the scenario. So we will draw the top card of our level one treasure. And what do we find? Oh, we found a Thieves Cape, plus one HP, plus one defense reroll. And he can wear that because we don't have any armor yet. We have a shield and a hammer. And then we also have a helm. And now he has his Thieves Cape as armor, giving him plus one health. So I'm going to go ahead and add 
a uh, token there, bringing him up to five again. All right, excellent. And now I can reroll my defense. So he's like a sneaky tank. That's super cool. I can imagine him wearing this cloak over his giant shell, kind of adding like a, a uh, I'm sure that reroll comes from like him like distracting the enemies with his cloak as he whirls around. Okay, so because he's moved here and because enemies and heroes can have line of sight, they can't attack diagonally, but they do have line of sight past single corners, these enemies here are now, um, they are now active, so they will be engaged. We are now engaged in combat again. And now we're going to the archers because the archers are at two and they're gonna do an additional point of damage because of their spot on the melee track there. So the first thing this archer is gonna do is he's gonna, she is going to move one and then take an attack. So a level one archer, she's gonna do two damage and we need to defend against that. So uh, man, we have got a ton of uh, defense though. So he's got it starting with a defense of two He's going to add his shield. He's going to add his one for being in the uh, top of the initiative track. And he's going to add one for his helmet, giving him five. And remember that he also gets that uh, reroll. And let's see what else he can do because of his power. I always forget the powers here. We did, um, we did vicious counter. So a crit defense causes one wound to a close attacking enemy per crit. Okay, so that archer is close. So if we roll any crits, we can also do wounds to the archer. And we didn't, oh my God, that was the worst defense roll I've ever seen. We did not get a single successful defense. All right, so let's see here. Uh, we have one reroll. Uh, <laughs> will we get lucky with this one reroll? No, man, I'm rolling so much range. This is absolutely garbage. All right, so that archer just did two damage to tank, taking him down to three. I think the t have the tides turned on the heroes. Is there time coming? All right, so, well, now we also have the grunts, and the grunts have an extra point of movement because they're at spot three on the initiative. They don't need it, though. They will move until they are in range, close range. So they're gonna move one, two, and they will both attack. So the way attacks work when there's multiple enemies in a group, you just kind of combine their, their total uh, damage. So the grunts are gonna do one damage, so they're actually gonna do two damage. Okay, so I, I need to defend against two again, rolling my five dice. There we go, uh, much better, much, much better. Okay, so I have a reroll, but rerolls are done after crit. So there's one success, two successes, three successes and that's also two damage I can deal because of my um, ability. We will reroll these. There's another success and then I get one reroll and another. Okay, so I easily blocked their attacks. No problem. Tank living up to his namesake. And then I can also deal two wound, a one wound to a close attacking enemy per crit. So wounds, they don't, wounds just go straight through armor. They, um, defense is only, they only block hits and then any hit, it becomes a wound. But if it deals wounds, it just goes straight to their health. And so I can do two and this guard only has, let's see, I'm going to choose to deal that to the archer because the archer only has two health and that way I can kill the archer outright. Okay, so that archer is dead. And now tank moves up in experience to level two. Uh, he has four experience now and he's actually going to move up a tier. And so he's at level two now, and he has plus one action. So Tank's gonna be taking three actions now. All right. So the first thing we have to do though, is we need to spawn a card. Well, actually, when 
one hero moves up into a tier, then all the other heroes get a certain bonus to their XP. And so I believe that, that when you move up to tier two, you gain one XP. So that also pushes Ross up to level four. So now Ross also has three actions because every hero, their level two ability is to have an extra action. Now, because Tank was the first to go up, we spawn a new set of enemies based on his level. So we're gonna draw the first spawn card here and we're going to spawn level two. We're gonna spawn one brute and you spawn that at the closest uh, spawn point to the um, hero who triggered the card being drawn, which was tank. There's a spawn point right here. And so we are going to spawn a brute. A brute comes crashing through the floor, the wall, ready to take on, uh, ready to tank on tank there. So let's see here, initiative track here. We have cleared out the archers. So they move, the grunts move up to add an additional attack. That's bad. Ross moves up to add an additional movement action. And then we also need to add our brute here at the end, giving him an additional point of defense. It's really easy to remember or to forget these, um, these bonuses. So. If I do, I apologize. I will try to remember them as often as possible. Okay, so that was Tank's turn. That was the Grunt's turn, actually. The Grunt's went. They attacked him. Okay, so now we're back to Ross. So what Ross is going to do is he's going to spend his point of uh, his first action. Well, he's got an additional point of movement, which is actually very nice for him right now. So he has a free move action because of that. So he's gonna use his free action to move up here into the treasure uh, space. He's going to use his first of three actions to interact with his treasure token, allowing him to draw a level one treasure, which gives him an accessory. He has a heart amulet. He adds one HP. All right, that's good. So I'm gonna add another point of um, health there. Okay, so now Ross has two more points of, um, two more action points. I think for the first one is he's gonna move one, two back down here, and then he has clear sight to these uh, grunts here, and he's gonna throw his, um, his throwing axes. You can throw through spaces that aren't blocked by walls or that aren't full. Um, that's called clear shot. So he has it. He's going to roll three dice here. Um, does he have anything else? Let's see here. I don't think he has anything else that adds. He does have a free reroll and a crit causes cleave per crit. All right, so let's see if we can uh, continue this chain of uh, range rolls. Probably not when I need it. Uh, what do you know? Okay. So there's one success on a grunt. And let's see, those grunts have one point of armor. So I do need to reroll, but let's see. So here's my crit roll. So I've got uh, one success so far. Okay, so there's two successes. And I did do a crit. So that's gonna have a point of cleave. And then I also get to do my reroll because of my holy robes. And nothing, okay. So I do one point of damage to the grunt, to one grunt, I'll put that there. And then because I rolled that cleave and because I did damage, I can apply a wound to another model in that space. And I will just go ahead and apply that to the, um, to the same, to the different uh, grunt there. And I believe that was correct. And I think that is his entire turn now. Um, let's see here. All right. Now we're at the, so that was Ross. Now we're to the Brute, who's gonna have uh, a boosted defense. But the Brute is, doesn't need to move because it is in close quarters to uh, tank there. And let's see, the Brute is gonna do two damage. 
So once again, tank for his defense. He's got a plus one. He's got two. He's got one for his shield. He's got two. He's got five. Okay, so we're looking for crits and shields. We've got one crit. All right, so he does. So let's reroll this one crit. So he has uh, he has one success so far. All right, and then we also have one reroll. And no, oh man, he just totally tank is tanking his defense rolls right now. Um, he is going to take a point of damage because we only successfully defended against one. So that's going to bring him down to two. I think it's about time that Tank uh, used his healing potion. But he did do a, um, a crit. So he will do one wound to a close attacking enemy. So he will do one wound as a follow-up, as a counterattack to the Brute. All right, so now we're back to Tank. So what is Tank going to do? Tank is, in, Tank is in kind of a dire situation here. Um, I think it's best for him to take out the grunts. So what he's gonna do is, he's got three actions now. He is going to spend his first action to smash one of the grunts with his hammer. That's gonna give him um, three dice. He doesn't have anything to add to his attack, but I'm looking for crits and axes. All right, there we go. So there's one hit, there's two hits so far. And then we also get this reroll. Three hits. Okay. So three hits to one grunt. The grunt, uh, they deflect one damage. So that's going to be two hits. They have three health. So this grunt has been wiped out, splattered on the floor. And that's going to give him another point of experience, bringing him up to level five or experience is five. Okay. For his um, second action, he's going to attack the other grunt. And there we go, we've got two hits so far with a crit. And there's three, okay, same thing, three hits, they deflect one, adding two, and he has killed that grunt. Bringing him up to six HP. Now I do wanna look up healing potions real quick. They are not as um, intuitive as you would think. Um, health potions represent health, Health potion tokens represent health potions that heroes may find. So we all, we started the game. Each hero started with one. Um, health potion is not taken by item slot. Heroes with health potions may spend one action to use the potion to, to heal half as many wounds equal to the hero's total maximum health rounded up. <laughs> Just, I mean, come on, guys. Just let... These are the kinds of rules in these games that give these games a bad name to people who don't play them. Um, just say, like, you heal all the way up or something. You know, don't make you have to do math and fractions and everything. I know it's simple math, but... Um, so, I just see. Tank has 5 HP. When he uses a health potion, his, uh, his wounds will heal up to half of his total HP. Since he has an odd number of HP, he will round up and heal for 3 wounds. Okay, so... Tank is going to use his third point of action to use his health potion, and he's going to heal up to three, giving him three. There we go. All right, so he's back up to five. And that was his turn. So the grunts are dead. We'll remove their card. Slide Ross up, which gives Ross an extra attack now, or an extra point of attack. And we will move the Brute up to have movement. That is good. That's where we really want the Brute. Because that doesn't really help him in attacking or defending. Which is good. So that was a good turn from Tank. So now we're at Ross. Ross has three points of action. So he's going to use his first one to move here. And then he's going to use his second one to chuck one of his uh, throwing axes as a ranged attack. And we have, oh, what a great roll. Two crits and a um, and ranged, so that's three hits so far. And then we have two re-rolls and both misses. Okay, but we did three hits. The Brute deflects two and takes another point of damage, bringing him to two. And let's see, um, we will do the 
let's oh he also had a plus one because of his um, attack there his attack bonus for being at initiative spot two so it's actually gonna bring the brute to three hits okay so let's do that again and we've got so that was a hit and a hit that's two so we're at his armor value now we have one reroll and a miss but we do get to add one because of his initiative spot so he's going to do one point of damage and that was his turn all right so now we're at the brute's turn the brute doesn't need to move it's going to attack it's in range of two but you attack by initiative track so it's going to attack tank it does two damage to tank tank has five dice for defense and he defends against one um, he does have a defense reroll and no man tank is just he cannot get these uh and there was no crit so he doesn't get to do damage so he takes another point of damage bringing him back down to four now we're back at the top here tank come on tank let's smash this brute in the face with your hammer we've got one hit we've got two hits and we have our crit reroll three hits all right so he's going to do one point of damage because the um the brute blocks two and that takes him to five which is going to kill the brute and that is going to bring tank up to eight experience one more experience uh for tank and he moves up to um level three so we really want to focus on getting ross up before tank goes just so we can keep them close uh, that's something you do have to kind of think about that is another similarity to zombie side and it is something i like i like it because when you're playing with a group of people and let's say one character one player is just is playing with a character that's better for that scenario it keeps the group from like wanting that character to just steamroll everything okay so now we have completely cleared the map of enemies there's nothing else we can do to gain xp so we're basically free like right now we could have gone and looked for other treasure if there was stuff on the board um we're kind of like in this like free range area free we, we can roam around there's nothing really to do so we're just going to say that we move over here and we interact with this ladder we open up the hatch door and we climb up and when we climb up we are going to actually be above ground in this tile here And I will set up the rest of the map in part four, and we will continue with this adventure. So, all right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I hope you can see ways that this game does differentiate itself from others in the genre, and also ways that it utilizes, you know, tried and true mechanisms and tropes to, to just create a very enjoyable, fun, lighthearted, but also not brainless dungeon crawl slash adventure game. So we'll talk to you guys later. Take it easy. Bye-bye.